Oh hi down there Kieran! Hello. Hi everybody, we are here once again at Not Your Average Bikes. There we are, there's the shop and there's the workshop. What am I doing today? I am going to start having a look at the valve clearances for the Kawasaki GT750. It's been a while since we did anything on that one and that's because it's been really reliable and has not needed any work. Meanwhile Kieran over here is just putting his battery on charge on the Kawasaki Versus 650 because he's thinking he's having some kind of charging issue but we'll investigate that at another time but for now GT750 let's go and find the old girl well there she is look up on the bench and ready to go we are using not your average bikes rent a bench scheme so if you need a bench like this and all the tools and a James over there in the distance who knows everything about everything then give him a shout I'll stick a link down below Anyway, let's go on with this. It's going to be a little bit rough and ready this video because we've got a lot to do and the radio's on, but hopefully you'll be able to hear us and we'll get to the bottom of this. Well, as you might assume, my face is not made of asbestos um, and I'm able to do this because the engine is cold, which I'm sure you know is required for this sort of a job. Okay, first step saying we're going to take the seat and the tank off. There we are then, seat and tank removed. Next step is to remove the spark plug caps. So there's one, two, and then two around the other side. And then we're gonna remove the coils from the frame. The spark plug caps are off, and now we're removing the coils. So we've got just a couple of bolts here, and then that pulls down. Same on the other side, so we'll do that. Well, there we are then, that's that one off. And now to get the other one. Uh, my spark plug leads are already labelled with which cylinders they fire in, so that's helpful. But if yours aren't, might be worth paying attention at this point. Just a quick note, on this side of the bike, when we've taken the coils off, obviously we've got some wires, and the red one was on the top terminal, green one on the bottom. And then over that side, we've got red on top and black at the bottom. Right now we're taking off the cylinder head cover screws, so we've got some 5mm Allen ones there and some 8mm bolty ones that are all over. There are many of those, so we'll do that now. Okay, we got a box with some holes in. Um, no, he's not planning to store a tortoise over winter. Um, this is a little plan of all the bolts and where they fit in the uh, top of this casing because they are different lengths uh, and we need to make sure that they're going back in the right place and doing their job correctly many many bolts later with all those bolts out then Kieran's gonna have a crack at removing the cover which came off quite nicely thank you very much getting it out of the frame might be a little bit more difficult but we'll see well there we are that's the cover off and there was a little thing that uh, came out of there this little plastic jobby I've no idea what that does I think it probably just helps to maintain tension on the timing chain but that came out, so we've just slotted that back in. It's got arrows on it, so you know which way it goes. So just be aware. Okay, moving on. We are over at the right-hand side of the bike now. And we are removing the inspection cover on the right-hand end of the crankshaft. I think they're 8mm. Yeah. Right, we've got the cover off the end of the thing there. And Kieran's going to stick on a 17mm spanner onto the hexagonal nut that's in there and turn that clockwise has to be clockwise please only turn that clockwise that is clockwise right now we're around the side we can see a little bit more clearly what's happening as Kieran's rotating this you can see that the lobes on the cam are going round and what we need to measure is the gap that's between uh, the bucket there and the bottom of the cam but we need to do that when the lobe here is opposite the bucket, so the bucket's coming up in a sort of slightly off kilter axis like that and you can see that the lobe is also going off at that same angle which means that we can measure the gap in there and we're going to do this in the order that it uh, appears as we go down so it's going to be this one and then number two and then we're going to skip one, let's go over to number four and then we'll come back to number three because that's just the firing order as it goes down so this one is where it needs to be first here he is then, Kieran's helping me out again. So Kieran's gonna to attempt to get this feeler gauge in there. We know for sure that this one will not fit in there. 
So we're going to go around to one that we do know fits and that will fit in. So we are assuming that this one is Correct. the measurement that we need to record. So that is very tiny numbers. 0 0.076. Point zero seven six. So we'll call that 0 0.075, which is what I've written there. 0 0.075, forgive the scribblings. And then we'll move on to the next. So back around again, there we go. And we're looking for number two here to be pointing upwards opposite the bucket. And then we measure that gap and write it down. And as I say, then we're going to go over to the next one, which will be four. And then the next one, which will be three. And then after that, we can go over and do the exhaust valves in just the same way. It's going to be one, two, four, three. And eventually, you'll get all these measurements written down and you can check if they are within tolerance. Okay, we've got all of those measured. According to the manual, they should be between 0 0.08 and 0 0.18 mil. And they do wear tight. So this is what we've got. Uh, the exhaust on cylinder one is 0 0.13, so that's within that range, about in the middle, so that's good. And then two is 0 0.15, also okay. Three, 0 0.075, not okay. Number four, 0 0.075, also not okay. Inlet, another 0 0.075, so that needs looking at. This one is 0 0.1, so it's within that range, but it is wearing slightly onto the tighter side, so we may change that one, we may not. And then we've got a 0 0.13, which again is fine. And then on this one, cylinder four, on the inlet, we've got zero. It's not quite pinching it, we were able to turn the bucket, but we could not fit a sensible feeler gauge in there. So that one is the furthest out, but we'll be looking at more anyway. Moving on. Now I've got those clearances measured then, we need to change some of these shims over. So to do that, we're gonna to have to remove the cams. And to do that, we need to nip down here and remove this thing here. There's like a little wedge in there which tensions the timing chain. So we're gonna remove that and see if we can get the cams out, if that gives us enough free play in this chain to get the cams out. It might be that it doesn't and we need to remove these two bolts and the whole housing thing itself. So. Uh, we'll start with this and see how we get on. Meanwhile, in the garage. <laughs> so this is what's just come out. That was the cap which came off first with the 17 mil head on it. And then a spring. And then a little wedgy thing. So that's what you're removing there. Incidentally, um, while this is off, I'm gonna rough this surface up here. And I think that just helps it do its job a little bit better. Uh, it's above my pay grade to know why. I'm not that clever, but I've been told that that's a good thing to do, so that's what we're going to do. Having done that, it's now cam removal time. We're going to start with the inlet cam, and we're just slackening off these 10mm bolts that are holding this in. Uh, this cylinder here is the one that's under the tension, so we're going to just be aware of that. And It may be different for you. So. Yeah, depending on where you've left your uh, cam. For us, it's this one, but be aware that one of them will be under spring tension, so this one's gonna to want to push out, so just be aware of that. Well, there we go. We've got all the camshaft caps taken off. We've kept them all in the right order with their own bolts, so as not to mix them up. As we were doing that, some of the uh, little guidey bush type things were coming away. So just make sure you've got all those, don't lose those. Around the other side here then, you can see that we've got a Sharpie pen, and we have marked the cam and the chain. Other brands of marker are available. <laughs> we've done that on both sides so what that means is when we put everything back together we can see really quickly really easily if everything lines up. Hopefully so. So Kieran over here is now going to attempt to take out the camshaft and hopefully we've got enough slack in the chain. I will mention at this point that now we've marked up the uh, camshaft and the chain do not rotate the engine otherwise you'll throw everything out. So there we are that looked like it came out quite nicely. So we're going to put that somewhere safe so as not to mix it up with the exhaust one when that comes out. Onto the exhaust cam then. It's just the same process exactly. Okay so we're ready to take the exhaust cam out. Before we're doing that we have just zip tied the cam chain up to the frame so it doesn't drop down into the engine. 
You probably see that a little bit more clearly now the cam's out. One other helpful bit, uh, there is obviously a marking on both that shows the exhaust and inlet. Yeah, so the other one said in, IN on it, and this one, EX, exhaust. So with the cams removed, we can now see the buckets and the shim should be underneath it. So you just need a magnet or something. Stick that on there and pull it out. So there's the bucket and the shim is actually still magnetized into the bottom of there. So there's the shim in the bottom. So I managed to find that shim in the bottom of that bucket and there you are. You can see it's in the calipers there and we've measured that at 2.65 mil. So we're going to go over here and you can see I've written that down 2.65 mil. So now we need to work out what the new valve needs to be and to do that there is an app. Of course. Right here we are then this is shim calc free and you can see what we've done is we've put in the uh, existing 0 0.075 measurement the current shim at 2.65 the minimum spec is 0.08 mil and the max spec is 0.18 mil and what that does is it gives you a new minimum or maximum shim size and we're going to aim roughly in the middle for that so we're going to need something about 2.6 so our new shim is going to be about 2.6 for this cylinder here we go then some maths has occurred and um, long story short I'm going to leave that one and that one this one wants a 2.4 and this one wants a 2.35, but that one already is 2.4, so that one is going to go there. And then I'll put a 2.35 in its place. Over here, uh, we need a 2.6, and then we need another 2.6. We're going to leave that one where it is. And then this, this was the one where it was miles out. We're not entirely sure why it's miles out, but we're going to put a 2.3 in and put it back together and hope for the best. So we're going to get the right shims out of here and put all those back where they need to be. Okay, okay. All the shims have been changed to the ones that were required, so these now should all be correct. So we're on to putting the buckets back over the top. They're obviously down there. And then the cams in and the chain in, so buckets first. So that's the buckets all back in and the exhaust cam going back in first. By the way, while I remember, we did start off measuring those with the vernier calipers and then decided to go over to a micrometer for a little bit more accuracy. So we use the micrometer and not the vernier calipers. So with the cams back in, Kieran's going around and tightening down these uh, cam retaining cap bolty thingies and there is an order in which to do that and the order is this order here. Hope you can see that, that should make sense to you. So it's just a case of working your way around progressively so the cams aren't being uh, tightened down off kilter and they need to be set to a particular torque figure which is 1.2 kilogram force meters whatever that is um, i've worked it out at 11.77 newton meters or well, the internet has the cams are back in then and the caps are tightened down to 11.77 newton meters all around and you can see that the lines that we drew earlier on, on the chain and on the cam itself, they all line up. So what we need to do now is go around and do the valve clearances again. Okay, so we've just done the valve clearances again and they are all within tolerance. I'll be honest at this point and say we had to do it again a second time because one or two of them were still slightly out. So uh, we have had more than one go at that, but now they are all correct. So we're going to get to putting things back together. We've got this uh, side cover to put on, we've got the wedge type tensioner to put in and also the timing chain itself looked a little bit slack to me so I might investigate that while we're in here. What we're doing now then, let's have a look. We are putting the uh, top cover back on. The timing chain was a little bit loose so we've just done some adjustment down there on the wedge which was a little bit sticky required a little bit of persuasion and i may replace that one for a manual one at some future date but for now i think we're okay so we're going to put the top cover back on and then the coils and the uh, spark plug caps and then see if she'll run obviously with fuel let's put the fuel tank back on also well the cam covers back on as are the coils uh, the um, cover itself 
the bolts for that they were tightened down to 7.8 newton meters and so we've got the coils on spark plug leads are on we need the fuel tank and then we'll see if she'll run okay we've got the first genuine fire up post uh, tinkering um, let's see how it reacts Battery bad noises? I don't think so. Wait. Well, there we go then. The old girl's back together, and I'm going to ride her home and hope that she doesn't fall to bits immediately. Uh, just massive thanks, I'd like to say, to this fella over here eating crisps. Hello. He's done a lot of knob twiddling and uh, nut turning and all that kind of stuff today. That was before we even got to the workshop. He's a very helpful little sausage. Uh, as is James, not sure where he's gone, over there. Give us a wave, James. Cheers, bro. And not your average bikes for the use of the bench. Everything. Hope you all enjoyed that. You know what to do. Give us a like if you liked it. If not, well, I apologise profusely. We'll see you later. Ta-da. <laughs>